Are you a fan of the No Dishes podcast? Be sure to check out our Patreon, where you can find exclusive merch and perks, and join the Clean Plate Club, our Facebook group where you can connect with other fans of the No Dishes podcast, share your favorite moments from the most recent episodes, and submit questions for upcoming guests. Season 4 of the No Dishes podcast is brought to you by VisitBloomington.com. VisitBloomington.com is the best resource for restaurants and culinary information, special events, fun activities, places to stay, and more in our area. We share a similar mission here on the No Dishes podcast of highlighting local businesses and the people who make our community unique. We can't thank them enough for hopping on board. Check them out at VisitBloomington.com to easily plan your next meal, visit, or night out on the town. Hey, say, honey, let's go out to eat. Relieve our culinary duties. With all these restaurants to sweep us off our feet. They're bound to turn us into foodies. No dishes, no dishes. No dishes We'll have a bottle of wine For lights and have a good time No dishes No dishes All right, welcome to another edition of the No Dishes Podcast. I'm really excited to uh, welcome our guest today, uh, Visit Bloomington Executive Director, Mike McAfee. Mike, thanks for being here, man. Hey, Jordan. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So as yeah. most people know, Visit Bloomington's the season four presenting sponsor. A lot, as we were talking about before we started recording, a lot of these things, you know, we couldn't have done uh, without you guys really having our back, like just taking the leap of faith to build a set, have this studio space. And, um, you know, we had talked at and had lunch about a bunch of different things. And we kind of just realized that the No Dishes mission and Visit Bloomington mission overlap in a lot of ways. What was it, I guess, that where did a light bulb go off where you're like, this is something we need to be involved in? Well, actually, I just wanted to sponsor it so I could be on the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. here we are. It no, worked out. It does make total sense for us. Uh, uh, you know, Indiana University is the reason we're all here. They kind of, they set that, I always say it, it goes well with the show. They set the table yeah. with that culture Ooh, they like create, that. but, but IU and, and we're a sports town and which includes outdoor recreation, but, but all of the arts from, from performing arts to the culinary arts that, you know, those are things that we promote. Those are the big reasons people come here all, all around IU and that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, when it comes to food and, and the culinary scene and the restaurant world, what is the what is the number one thing that travelers do when they are on the road? They eat. Yeah, they yeah, eat. You gotta is, eat. It, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. They have to eat. But but certainly, um, I, I always say this too. Um, my wife and I were at um, the History Center not that long ago, and and I was looking at some stuff, and 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 um, the sun, there's some signs when you come in there, and it talks about the the mid archaic period, which was 10,000 years ago. And it said, people came to this area to gather nuts and gather food and to gather to eat. And I'm like, wow, we're still doing that 10,000 years yeah, later. It's nuts. like different circumstances, yeah. obviously, but 10 vegan restaurants, you know, that type yeah. of stuff. So <laughs> it's just interesting to me, but, um, um, but, but obviously culinary and food is just a big part of the, the visitor world here in, in Monroe County and people flock here to, to eat in our restaurants and go to our wine wineries and breweries and and that's just a big part of why they're here we're spoiled yeah don't tell don't tell people that complain about the students that why we're here is iu you know <laughs> i yeah. always love that they're like these students and it's like we a lot of us would not be living here of course it not yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. got to take it and take the the bad with the good right but right. I, yeah i wanted to get that out of the way for just saying thank you before we got dove into anything else because yeah. we are very very grateful so. makes total sense for us it's a, it's a great partnership uh, um both ways there and um it's something that food and and, and our culinary scene is, is, like I said, is one of the top things that we promote. So it just makes sense for us to be working together. And we need somebody like you who is out there uh, working in it every day and, and, and is really authentic and genuine. So we love working with you. 
Sweet. Yeah, that's um yeah, it's it's a match made in heaven. I've told so many people that and before we even announced it, close friends, I was like, dude, I'm so excited. We've got Visit Bloomington working with us cool. and we really think that'll help get what we're doing out there and because yeah. we we like what we're doing a lot. We we just like you said, we're so lucky, but we feel that way at Visit Bloomington. We're lucky to live here. We all love this here. But but at the end of the day, people you know, we're we're talking about stuff. People know it's marketing and advertising and promotion. But when we're working with you, you're you're actually talking about what you're doing every day. So so that's a big part of it. Authenticity. That's why we want to support your show. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah. Well, that's how it all started was just yeah. people realizing, like, oh, this guy eats out every meal. <laughs> like, not only have I worked directions since, since I was 15, he's eating out every meal, so he knows about all these places. And then and the reviews started, then this started, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, I, we're going to make our new tagline, Garrett, I think. Uh, like, no dishes covering the 10,000-year-old food scene in <laughs> Bloomington. <laughs> I think uh, think that might stick. That's right. Hey, they they were coming back in the, way back then to um, what what, the, what they did at night was they they played music and and sang together, doing that too. I love you know? it. Yeah, I was talking about that. It. It's a say I was reading the same stuff. It's great. I, so. Well, and too with our other season long sponsor we have with Constellation. Yes. You know, it's dinner and a show. They're exactly. putting on productions. It just goes hand in hand. And so just to see, like I see it, but to, to have you guys and Constellation see it the same way and see how they just you know fit together so perfectly is cool. Dinner, a show, and sports. I mean, those are three big, you know, the three big reasons yeah. why people come here in, in some capacity. And then so. hopefully I can start getting outdoors more and work out work right, off some of the right. calories. But we'll exactly. we'll get there. Yeah. One step at a time. Uh pun intended, I guess. Kind of. <laughs> uh so tell one of the coolest things I've had the the opportunity uh to kind of serve on the board for maybe a year now, something about that. And one of the coolest things to me is all this the stats that Visit Bloomington has and the statistics just the data that you guys have on where people spend money when they come in town, how, how they like where they go, when, uh, it, and it blew my mind and I really nerd out over it. And I think a lot of people would appreciate some of that stuff. Can you kind of dive into some of the, the stats that you have? You kind of already did, but also a lot of people don't understand what is like, how, what is visit Bloomington? How's it funded? What's its purpose? Sure. Sure. Well, I can start with that. Our, our, uh, yeah, we were created in 1977, and that's when um, Monroe County created the innkeepers tax, and that was to um, create a fund to do visitor promotion. Um, you know, obviously, even way back then, people were coming here for IU related activities and things like that. But but we wanted to expand upon that, and so in 1977, they started collecting that innkeepers tax, and Visit Bloomington was formed at that time to do the marketing and promotion to. Tourism for tourism and, and visitors. So we we promote um, uh, Monroe County to visitors of all kinds. We want them to come here for those activities. Um, I really look at it as kind of three segments: the groups. Uh, there's sporting groups and there's business groups, conventions and meetings, and then there's the leisure travel, or we kind of segment or we kind of look at culinary as part of leisure. But obviously all three of those types of travelers need to eat. So, Absolutely. But again, yeah, we're, we're promoting from Chicago to Cincinnati to Louisville, all the way over to St. Louis, everywhere in between, really worldwide now with with the internet and that type of stuff. But those are our main target I markets. I thought you were going to say with the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Now worldwide podcast. with no dishes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but those are our main target markets, and, and we're we're a, we're a rubber tire drive to market. People drive here from all from from everywhere in between all those places, and and certainly with our our close proximity to the Indianapolis airport, a lot more people are flying into Bloomington these days, or they're able to. I mean, I always say we're 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 an easier drive. Bloomington's an easier drive from the Indianapolis airport than it is to drive to the northeast side in Carmel or, or somewhere like that. Yeah. It takes less time. I was talking with my buddies about how once I sixty nine is done, yeah. I'll be able to go to a Colts and Pacers game quicker than my friends at Nobles. Right, you know, right. it's so quick now. Right. But about three million visitors come to come to the Bloomington Monroe County area every year. Again, wow. for all those just those types of things we're talking about, whether it's whether it's business travel or they're coming here for a conference or something with the university or something with Cook or whoever it might be, or again sports sporting events and things like that, or all those leisure travelers and they're coming here for Monroe Lake and all the activities around Hoosier National Forest and downtown Bloomington and everything to do with Indiana University and, and everything. In between, but like I always say, what's great is they come here and and um, they 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 
go out to eat and, and they stay in our hotels and they spend money on retail and shopping and all that type of stuff. And then they leave and go home back to where they came from. And almost every time they have great things to say about, about their trip here. So they're our best type of marketing and advertising is that word of mouth from, from past visitors. But, um, culinary is, um, culinary and food is about say out of every $100 that visitors spend, they spend $35 on food. They spend $25 on retail. They spend $20 on transportation, $15 on lodging and $5 on entertainment. So, wow. so again, food is, food is always that biggest, biggest thing. And of course it is because they're eating three times a day and, and that type of stuff. So yeah, man, that's, I see, I just love yeah. that, like that breakdown, just that knowledge yeah. that that's out there and yeah. that like you can have, have those specifics. Right. And I mean, that's, I do an economic impact study every year and they, they give us those, those statistics and it always comes back like that. Food is always right around 35% of, of visitor expenditures. Um, That's another thing we'll have to do. 2022 was uh, a record year as far as um, visitate number of visitors in the market and um, as far as revenue generated in the market from visitors. So um, just remarkable to uh, to our hospitality industry, what they've done. Um, coming back, we lost uh, in, in, in 2020 um, during the height of the pandemic, Tourism lost about a little, about 33% of our business went away in 2020. I would have thought it would have been even higher though. So well, that's it was way higher at the beginning of the year and it started to come back. You know, we, we, rebound, yeah, we rebounded as well as anybody. And, and that's because we're, we're still a really small town. We're, we're set inside a national forest. There's 40, what, 40,000 residents and 40,000 students. So those students were gone. People were seeking out, um, small destinations where you can get outside and, and, and obviously be, have the spacing and, and that type of stuff, which that's what, that's what Bloomington is. So yeah. people came back quick where they could, they could stay in unique lodging. They could, they could stay in cabins outside the city they, they could, they could get food to go. Our restaurant scene did an amazing job with all the to go stuff. Yeah. Um, adapting. Uh, yeah. Well, and we was, noticed it not to promote Brown County, but at our Brown County store, we noticed everywhere out there, very quickly saw a 30% uptick on, in 2020 because it's so outdoorsy. You know, in Monroe County, right. obviously it's the right. same, not quite as right. much, but it's uh, that's that's cool that we rebounded so quick yeah. despite how rough 2020 well, started. in the fall, we started to rebound in the fall. Obviously, earlier in 2020 when it was shut down, when everything was shut down, that's when the big losses occurred and they had to. And, I, you know, again, I I just commend Monroe County and, and the city and, and the university for the protocols that they put in play that, that kept us all safe and that type of stuff. And, la and in 21... Um, we gained back about 80% of that of what we lost in in 20 and so things came back really strong again same thing people were taking those those trips where they could get away from the density they could be outdoors but yet they could get good food and that type of stuff revenge travel thank you That's I was right. gonna, yes yeah. have you heard that term garrett Revenge yeah. travel. I right. love it. People it's, were saying, I haven't heard that. That's it's awesome. so good. <laughs> right. It came up. And, yeah. It was like, no matter what COVID, no matter what <laughs> pandemic, no matter what, I am taking this trip with my family this fall. You're not going to stop me. I'm going no yeah. matter what. We, we saw a lot you, of that. Yeah, here I got in, cooped in, up. It's yes. time to get out and right. spend hopefully right. some, maybe some money you might've saved. So obviously the pandemic affected a lot of people in different ways, but right. I loved, I, that was the first time last week I saw that right. term. And that's so, so perfect. But, you know, I want to finish what I was saying about how hard um, the hospitality industry worked and continued to work. We lost, there's about 8,000, going into the pandemic, there were about 8,000 people working in hospitality. That's restaurants, hotels, retail, you know, anything like that. We lost about 2,000 of those jobs. And only to this day, about 1,000 of have come back. Wow. So that whole workforce is still down about 1,000 jobs. So that might be still why you might wait just a little bit longer to get your drink order in or, or what it is. And I always want to say, you know, thank, thanks to our community members and thanks to our visitors who are, are really patient. And, and again, thanks to our hospitality workers who've done an amazing job of really stepping up and doing more and more and more with less, whether again, it's hotels or restaurants or, or retail shops or whatever it might be. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's been amazing. Yeah. That's um, one where like, I always think of, you know, not to everyone has unique challenges in their jobs, but for me, it's always, you know, social workers, nurses and teachers that are the most underappreciated but maybe a, you know a couple a step or two down hospitality workers are in there you know that's what here that's what i'm here to talk about yeah. but i agree with you for sure yeah. the healthcare oh, yeah. workers and all that kind of stuff and then last year 2022 so so we came back last year and last year was a record year as far as visitation in the
the market and revenues from from you know the things that I can track lodging and, and food and beverage and and a lot of that was due to inflation in the economy and the things were much more expensive but also there were more visitors in the market than ever before so again I credit I credit our 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 hospitality and, and and tourism industry to that for for all they've done to keep it going and and people I think people just got smarter about the way they did business and and really um, yeah. focused in on their marketing and and doing a great job of hosting and the service they provided people and and people I think people too took a lot of pride in coming back to Bloomington and we heard it all through the pandemic like the first place I'm going is back to oh, Bloomington man. back there where we love to go Hell yeah. how much they missed it during the pandemic so so we'll continue to recover from that but but we're just lucky again that we have this thriving I don't, I don't want to say thriving because it is labor and and supply is, is are very serious issues for a hospitality community but still they're doing a great job of 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 servicing the visitors that are coming to the community yeah i mean um, it's a challenge because you know a lot of a lot of uh places ourselves including at the chocolate moose have student workers and a lot of times when we're getting busy on graduation and certain other you know mom's weekend dad's weekend those students are then busy Right. And so it's like not only is there an influx of people coming in, you have less workers, <laughs> less people available to serve those yeah. people. Yeah. So it's a it's kind of a double whammy. But it's uh, you know, there's definitely some silver linings that came out of the pandemic. You know, restaurants working smarter, harder, but also people, you know, like you said, two thousand left, only a thousand have come back. Some of those people I'm sure went and found jobs that maybe offer a little more security than hospitality work. Sure. You know, some people like myself, I don't I don't think I could ever do something that wasn't, <laughs> you know, as kind of uh, keeps you on your toes as much as right. hospitality work. And that's how a lot of friends of mine are. But for some people, that's great. They got to go experience what it's like to have Saturday and Sunday off. And right. Get nine right. Of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. Hey, I, 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 when I'm, when I'm interviewing people and, and looking for, for people, um, when I have openings at Visit Bloomington, when, when they have, when they have restaurant experience, that goes in the pile of, yes, I'm going to consider them because I know they're able to overcome problems quickly and deal with them and move on and, that, yeah. and that, you know, that type of stuff. But, uh, yeah. And, um, uh, you, Bloomington and Monroe County were, were built for this industry, right? We've got, we've got 40,000 screaming college kids that are interested <laughs> in part-time flexible jobs so they, can, so they can work in this industry and go to school at the same time. Yeah. That's you know, something we, works, yeah. yeah, we constantly talk about is how, you know, we probably have more staff than you would normally need for a business that does the, you know, amount of revenue we do and they're, you know, open the hours we are, but we have such high quality staff because we're so flexible with them on when they can and cannot work. Right. You know, and you, it's a give and take. You make sacrifices to get high quality people that are looking for certain things because they're students. You know, we understand that chocolate mousse isn't going to be the career for them. They're working towards their career. You know, we're there to um, help them for where they're at right now in their life. And hopefully they could pick up some things to take on. Yeah. yeah. Tourism and hospitality. It's a great industry to work in. Again, you can work your way up and, the, and there's all kinds of jobs in management and at ho hotels and, and resorts and, and, and all kinds of businesses, as you know. So yeah. Yeah. There are um, some people that you don't think it'll be a career. They end up making it one for right, sure. Yeah. We've right. got a couple of those. I like to think that, you know, visit Bloomington is almost like, uh, like a referee in a game where like, you don't notice when they do a good job. You know what I mean? Like, cause you, You've been there for how long now? 15 years. Yeah. So it's a year. It's in, it's so Visit Bloomington's been around since the 70s. So you've been there 15 years. And I feel like it's just such a well oiled machine that just really does its thing that a lot of times people just don't notice how much you guys are doing. Um, and that's, that's why I like the referee analogy. Cause again, I feel like if you weren't doing a good job, it would be noticeable and people would be thinking about it all the time. Well, well great. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. And it's like you said, we're, we're lucky. We've got an amazing, we got a really great destination. And, and, uh, I mean, it's a, a big 10 college town that, that, um, um, the southernmost Big Ten college town, really one of the smallest communities that that host a, a major research institution like this, and 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 so it's great to live in a. It's a, we we spend a lot of time talking about how do we. Um, you know, do do what we're supposed to do to to recruit more visitors to come here, but at the yet yet at the same time protect what we love about it, the, right. the size and what what we love about living here. So that's that we talk about it all the time. It's very important to us. What's it's what makes Bloomington unique and special to everybody. Yeah, that's that yeah. constant battle where it's yeah. like, how do you have progress and the things that you need to house people and students and keep moving forward while keeping Bloomington what it is? You know, because it's. 
you see all the time. Anytime something new is being built, people are like, oh, this is just blooming to now. It's not the same. But it's like, yeah, I feel like a lot of that's necessary to continue to grow and stay thriving, but right. still keeping the unique. What the makes responsible unique. growth that we all talk about. You right. Know, I want to I want to walk the walk about it. And and uh, but but it definitely is something where, you know, it's like and I don't want to. It's like the convention center. I certainly don't want to talk too much about that. But again, all we're <laughs> we don't all have, how much time do we have? Yeah, all we're trying to do with that is is meet the demand that we have and 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 go from being able to host a group of 250 to host a group of 400. Right. You know, we're not trying to be Indianapolis or compete with them. So, but that's a whole other thing. It's just again, that's kind of the growing pains of Bloomington in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Just meeting groups that are already here that are that are growing and and just trying to keep them happy. Do you want to give a a a, a cliff notes of where we're at on the convention center. Cause I feel like if there's anyone qualified to fill people in that haven't kept up that you might be the, the one to do it. I'll just say very quickly that, um, that facility is, um, full all the time with, with both local groups and visiting groups and we lose and visit Bloomington. We like talked about what we do and, and we promote that facility just like we promote Four Winds and the Indiana Memorial Union. I've got a sales rep that's out there trying to bring groups to use all those facilities or any facility in Monroe County that could host a business meeting or a conference or something like that. So so we don't really care where they go um, as long as they come and, and, and do what we talked about earlier. Yeah. But um, that facility, uh, you know, we lose. Um, a couple group, we lose opportunities, a couple groups a month to, to have to host them of groups of three, four, 500 people. Again, we're not talking thousands of people, thousands of cars in Bloomington, but we, we lose the opportunity to try and host groups of three, 400 people a couple times a month, just because the, the facility is full. Um, or we don't have hotel rooms for them or things like that. And, and that's been going on for a couple of decades. And again, Hey, um, Great destination, great community. Things are fine just like they are, but we sure would love to be able to host a couple hundred more people in town Monday through Thursday nights, and they're going to be going out to dinner. And, 35% and, yeah, of their $100 going that, to restaurants. Exactly, yeah. that type of stuff. So so that's where I, you know, we're not trying to create more weekend business. That's what I talk about with responsible growth. Visit Bloomington doesn't need to promote weekends. We're trying to create Sunday through Thursday business in this community now. Certainly, we talk about what's happening on weekends because that's when all the cool leisure things are going <laughs> yeah. on. But, but really, our our mission is really focused on how can we create weekday business. We're, we're 80% full on weekends and and about 45 to 50 percent full on weekdays so that's our opportunity for responsible growth right there yeah. in any in any type of tourism absolutely yeah that's cool what yeah. um so one of the things you've been doing for the monday through thursday uh that we you know recently talked about potentially involving uh food truck friday is uh music one of the things you spoke about you know there's arts <clears throat> there's food there's outdoors there's sports but there's music bloomington's such a big music town city what what's uh what have you guys been um kind of promoting and uh generating to help um, right. highlight what we have here to offer right. Well, well, Visit Bloomington is just one small part of that. We, we've been working with um, the venues and we've been working with the music events like the Cosmic Songwriter Festival and, and uh, Grand Falloon and, and some of the others and, and, and just uh, the Secretly Canadian and the labels and things like that to try to get this music initiative going where we're, we want to grow the music industry in Bloomington and support all that artists and, and the labels and the radio stations and the venues. And for me, I'm coming at it from the venue. Same thing. You know, I don't, Visible Bloomington doesn't need to help bring weekend um, shows to the Orbit Room and the Block House and the Bishop and things like that. But if we can do something to help them try to bring in maybe better talent or bigger shows Monday through Thursday so we can have more people, more music fans in town during the week on those types of nights, that's really what we're interested in doing. So, We've been working with we we've been working with them and 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 with this group and trying to do some of that type of stuff. So we're creating this music tourism strategy to really promote weekday music stuff. That's we great. got a few a few things going on with some festivals and some concerts and things that we're trying to produce during the week coming up in the next year. That's great. What are, I know some of the venues you know are obvious like the Bluebird and uh, the Block House. What are some of the other ones that you guys are highlighting? 
Well, I, I mean, we love working with the Orbit Room yeah. and um, the Bishop and, and uh, like you said, the Blockhouse and, I mean, what, the Buskirk Chumley Theater and, you know, anything like that. The bees, all the ones that have been yeah. with bees. <laughs> I was going to say, there's but, a common um, thread I, there. I mean, it's just like you said, I, I did dinner and a show, whether whether it's um, theater or, or music or, or whatever it might be. It's just a huge attraction in Bloomington, so... You know, I think anything we can do to to highlight that stuff, and uh, I mean, we've we've had a prom- we've had a promotional partnership with the Bluebird going for for years, where we do contests to give away tickets to that type of stuff, where people can register to win a hotel room and and dinner out somewhere and tickets to a show. So we do things like that all the time. Yeah, there's always so many great giveaways. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one where I always like mean to get in there, and then I'm like, man, I like I feel like almost selfish since I feel like I get to experience Bloomington pretty well already. Where it's like I'd rather that opportunity hopefully go to someone that doesn't have that opportunity on a consistent basis to go see all the awesome things that you guys offer as right. part of these packages. Yeah, and I, you know, I didn't. We didn't even mention the Jacob School, obviously the best music school in the country. Again, going back to Indiana University, and did a lot to help create that music culture that we're talking about. But there's so much stuff that goes on over there, you know, on the campus that mu- music related performances and things that are free, world class stuff that people can go to. So trying to do a better job, it's it's almost impossible to get a handle on it, and know all that stuff. But we're trying to do a better job of helping spread the word about those types of things as well. Yeah, I feel so. like I'm still, even 12 years of living here, I'm finding yeah. out things like, oh man, I, I've never been to the MAC, right, you know, like right. the Musical Arts Center there off yeah. Jordan. Um, you know, we've I've dropped ice cream carts off there and we've partnered with them, but I've never gone to a show there and I need to. And there's so many cool things. And uh, with re- I'm repping the Duran Jones and the Indication <laughs> shirt. I think they're all Jacob School guys. Right. So that's, right. Uh, yeah, it's to have that talent pool right here in such a small community. Uh, uh, so many bands, so many yeah, good bands. Oh, I know. Yeah. Are we supposed to be talking about food? We're getting into music now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that we like uh, we like rabbit trailing wherever. I right. love music too. It all works together, though. I mean, it really is. It's what makes Bloomington unique. So it's just like you said, people can people can come for a show and 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 go out for some food. It it's really is the the best part of Bloomington, I think. So. Yeah, and it's all pretty walkable too. That's yeah. that's why I love walkable Bloomington. and safe. It's it's one of right? the first. It's one of the you know first thing that um, event planners are looking for is. Is your is your event facility walkable to um, independent restaurants to independent shopping and and we can we check all those boxes yeah so. well and, and that's one thing that a lot of people lose sight of too is Bloomington's still very safe you know it's easy to see a headline here or there about things going on in uh, isolated cases but it's man I've Obviously, I'm a, a larger person, so it's not. I don't feel as afraid as some people might be with good reason at yeah. certain times. But it's a very safe community. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. You know, I, and we all agree. We, you know, let's 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 try to do even better, right? Let's let's eliminate all of those crimes or anything like that. But I think you're. But but are they this the stats don't lie. We are we are a very safe community. You know, just like we're a very affordable community as well. But um, you know, sometimes when you live here a long time, you can be kind of. Um, that stuff can take you off guard when there's an increase in something like right, that. Right, yeah, so, yeah. Um, um, It'll throw you off a little bit. Yeah one, yeah. one thing, not to jump around too much and jump back to it, but I just wanted to clarify, just last thing at Convention Center, I promise. Uh-huh. So the money is in place. The, the food and beverage tax was implemented. So the money is there to build it, but now it's just kind of the city and the county have come to an kind of impasse, right? Right. Okay. Okay. We don't need to dive into <laughs> no. it, but I just want to make sure we kind of said where we are with that. Yep. The pandemic set it back. The pandemic set it back as well. Um, in 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 late nineteen, um, um, the 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 two, the city and county were working on it. There was a group that was working on looking at some different scenarios. Paused for the holidays. Came back in February of twenty twenty and banned the pandemic hit. And so obviously then it was. Then it was stopped again there. So it's so it's continued to be on hold, and and there is some some um, work there to be done um, between among the county and the city about uh, the type of structure that would run it and things like that. But I, I do feel it's it's going to get done. There there's a lot of um, things happening in the area right now that that um, other projects that have to kind of get decided upon that are impacting this. But um, you know everything is in place to hopefully make it happen and and. Uh, 
you know, I'm I'm only thinking positive thoughts. I love going it. Forward. Yeah, like I'm that. here for it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, let's, I, Mike. I want to. We've talked about Visit Bloomington and a lot of things Bloomington has a, to offer. What you've been, like you mentioned, you've been at Visit Bloomington 15 years. Have you grown up in Bloomington? Did you move here? I kind of want to know your story <laughs> and how you ended up here, sitting across from me today. Great. Well, no, I came. I came here for this job 15 years ago. I, I did grow up in. Um, a small town in Illinois and um, uh, went to school at a, at a small liberal arts school in Illinois. Then I moved to um, St. Louis from there and started working in the tourism industry. I worked for the state of Missouri for um, in the early 90s um, as their marketing director, the state tourism office as wow. their marketing okay, director. Yeah. And then I moved to Chicago from there and started working for Six Flags Theme Parks oh, in their cool. marketing okay. department. Were you in the commercial and they put makeup on you? Was that you? <laughs> that wasn't me. It wasn't me, but uh, I remember that commercial well. But I've been in the tourism industry so for since the early 90s, so over 30, 35 years of Man. sales and marketing experience. I, and actually, the, the big move was from Chicago. I moved from Chicago to Great Falls, Montana, and started working for an advertising agency out there. Um, my account was the Montana State Travel Office, as well as okay. um, yeah. Glacier and Yellowstone National Parks, which was great. I was, I and, imagine. Uh, yeah. I mean, Lake Monroe is pretty great, but right. I mean, Yellowstone, Yellowstone. Right. Great. And I lived there for a few years and moved to Portland, Oregon, and and worked in um, actually radio sales and marketing with a. Um, a in tourism as well, selling to tourism and, and, and stuff like that. And then I eventually moved back to the Midwest and and uh, where my family was from and a, a lot of friends and a network of people and and uh, wanted to be in a Big Ten college town working at a convention and visitors bureau and the, and the Bloomington job came open and I got I'm extremely fortunate to be here. Yeah, so, I think um, Bloomington's fortunate to have uh, you, and thanks, it's cool that yeah, saying that kind of sucked you in too. You know, I I know the feeling. Oh, for sure, <laughs> it's it's unreal how um, how you 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 really do come here and catch. Uh, Cream and crimson fever. Yeah. <laughs> it took, takes about a week, and you're bleeding it. It's, yeah. it's great. Though. Well, I was going to so, say before Montana and Portland, I was like, not only do you have 35 years or exactly what it was, but uh, it's almost all in the Midwest. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, li live it. I grew up in the Midwest, and and uh, you know, I love the Midwest college towns, and and uh, you know, Bloomington was very attractive to me. So have all the jobs you've had been, like you said, out of college? Did you work any any in high school or, or college? Oh yeah, I worked in. I was a, I waited tables. There we all go. Now college. we're getting to the good. Yeah, I waited. <laughs> I waited tables um, through college. I, I waited tables even after college a little bit. When I, I in my first job out of college was in St. Louis, Missouri. I was selling copiers, going from business to business during the day, and then at night I I waited tables and. At the pasta house. Okay. In yeah. St. Louis. Wanted to, yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. Was that, that sounds maybe kind of high end. It was a uh, it was a chain that was started there oh, at, okay, the, at the pasta okay. house, and and then I and then I did work at a at another um, um, uh, a boutique restaurant in the call in the Central West End that was really nice for for a long time. I. I was pretty good at it too. Yeah, I was right. gonna say if you had uh, yeah. push came to shove, you're out somewhere. They're like, Mike, we need help. We're getting rocked. You, you still got it? I do. Yeah, you're like I absolutely. Do. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually during college, I, I had an internship and and um, waited tables at uh, Marriott Tantera Resort at Lake of the Ozarks. Where oh, okay. Ozark, where Ozark was filmed down there. I uh, uh, yeah. wow, I waited okay. tables there for a while, so that was fun. Yeah, you see college. Jason Bateman as a kid before he yeah right, started right. the. <laughs> Introducing Constellation Stage and Screen, Bloomington's newest professional theater and film company. On stage next, Constellation presents American Fast, a riveting new sports drama playing March 23rd through April 8th at the Ted Jones Playhouse. 21-year-old college basketball sensation Katie Salama makes it to March Madness, only to become a national news story when she lies about observing the Muslim fast while competing in the tournament. See this thrilling new basketball drama, American Fast, on stage March 23rd through April 8th in downtown Bloomington. Find tickets at C, that's S-E-E, constellation.org. You haven't heard about Excalibur? Well, you better ask somebody. Hello. It's Bloomington's premier axe throwing facility located at 3604 West 3rd Street. 
It's perfect for birthdays, wedding parties, corporate events, or just hanging out with your friends. They also offer fun for all ages and super exciting jelly ball. Find out more and book your next event at axcalibers.com. That's A-X-E caliber with an S, axcalibers.com. Did you know the Chocolate Moose has a second Bloomington location? Located next to Buffalo Louie's on Indiana Avenue, not only can you find our famous homemade ice cream, but we also have a full coffee menu featuring locally roasted Brown County coffee and delicious vegan and gluten-free treats from our friends at Rainbow Bakery. Skip the line and order ahead at moosebtown.com seven days a week. Open early at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. It's the perfect early morning stop, midday pick-me-up, or late-night snack. Well, that's awesome. I and mean, yeah, it sounds like you've been well-traveled, but obviously, you know, a lot of the time in the Midwest, you've been in Bloomington for 15 years. What What are some of your observations over those 15 years about how it's changed? Obviously, our core and its roots, a lot of what we talked about has stayed the same. What What's what's changed since you've been here? Well, just like everybody, I, I, what, I think there's probably always three or four cranes in the skyline <laughs> of um, yeah. bu- building um, various types of housing and things like that. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of that in the last 15 years, um, all that student housing that's come up in the downtown area and things like that. So, so it's a big, been a big part of the change, I think. Yeah. The Um, landscape. Yeah. Right. Right. Or skyline. Yeah. Right. But, but I think, um, um, you know, all the things we've talked about, I, I'm so focused on hospitality and tourism and, and what I'm doing, you know, and I've seen, I see so many restaurants and attractions and and things come and go and and new one you know as soon as as soon as visit bloomington thinks we got a handle on our on our restaurant guide we know that one or two clothes are open and things like that so just just all the comings and goings of that and and um you know i like i said i'd love to i'd love to have seen the um the the tourism and hospitality industry grow like like it's done in the in the last couple decades i i am really proud of that i do feel like we've done a a good job of of growing it slowly and, and responsible, as I've said, and, and really focusing on the right things. That's great. One of the things I talked about with uh, Glass on the radio show last week was how many people, and we had talked about it too, is how many people that are local don't use to know to use Visit Bloomington as a resource <laughs> because it's like, well, I'm not. I, why would I, I'm not visiting Bloomington? I live here, but right. you have everything together in one place. Yeah, it's still the the number one market. I, I mean, I track all that stuff. So, so Indy and Chicago and Louisville and Evansville and Fort Wayne, all the, you know, all of our target markets. Lots of people on our website. There's we you get about in 2022 was the first year we ever had over two million page views on visitbloomington.com. Wow. We had over a million people use the site, and why when I say use it, it's a user session. Two minutes and 18 seconds was the average user session. So they're actually clicking from page to page to do things. Call it food, food stuff, restaurant listings, things like that are always one of the top four or five things they're looking at. We get about 10 to 15,000 people a month looking at our restaurant listings, um, clicking through to restaurant pages, wow. things like that. Um, so um, um, uh, what was... The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for the oh, no. how it's a resource for local people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so I say that Indy and, and all target markets are, are large users of it, but Bloomington, the Bloomington market's always number one. That's great. Okay. It's usually about a quarter of the people on there are from the Bloomington area, the Monroe County area. So that is great. There's a lot of locals using it, but we don't market in Bloomington, right? Yeah, We're yeah, not yeah. supposed to. Exactly. We 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 have about a, a 1.8 million dollar budget, and we spend about a million dollars marketing. Um, Monroe County tourism in, in, you know, at least 50 miles, you know, Indianapolis and beyond. And um, so we don't spend that money in Bloomington because that's not worth what we're well, supposed to be doing. We do do some of that. But you're funded by the innkeeper's right, tax. Right. So people but, li- here aren't, yeah, you know, needing yeah, a place to stay. Right. We have about 35,000 people that receive our monthly e-newsletter. And that's where we send out stuff about events and, and different things like that. And about um, 15,000 of them are from the Monroe County area. So there's a lot of people that are getting that. But still, visit Bloomington.com is our website. We try to list you know, all kinds of events on there. We try to keep it as updated as we can with restaurant info and, and various things like that. It is a constant work in progress. I think we put, um, 122 blogs on there. I think there's like 61 foodie culinary blogs on our website right now, all related back to, you know, best pizza places, Yeah, you know, this type of stuff. So we're just constantly content. That fresh content is, is really one of our very, very best marketing tools. 
That's great. I know, and you mentioned too, it's Monroe County, so it's visit Bloomington, but it's all of Monroe County that it falls under your kind of purview. Yeah, and again, um, very very lucky to get our to get to call ourselves visit Bloomington because people know where that is. People really don't travel to counties. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, d- I have to say, we are located next to the exception in Brown R- County. Right. The yeah. People do know Brown County. But otherwise, when was the last time you said, hey, I'm going to take a trip to Marion County? Yeah. I just didn't do it. <laughs> so it's people are people are coming to Bloomington. And, and but yeah, we, we want people in Ellettsville and Steinsville and Smithville and, 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 and eating out at the Four Winds and, 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 you know, all that type of stuff. That's that it doesn't make any difference to us as long as they're somewhere within Monroe. County, um, um, enjoying our hospitality industry. Yeah. Or if there's some things that you would say, you know, someone like myself that's been here for a while, what are some of the, maybe the unknown attractions or things to do that you think are really great that are unique to Bloomington that, you know, people might not know about. Right. Well, you put me on the spot and, <laughs> and you, you're, that's fine. I can do that. You're probably going to know it, but, but I always go right back to the Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist, you know, cultural center. What are you know, and and the other cultural centers in the community. What what an amazing, you know. And again, how did that start? The Dalai Lama's brother taught at Indiana University, so that culture was created through that, and and he and he ended up starting that as well as the restaurant and and that type of stuff. So so all the cultural centers and 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 that is an amazing just really unreal that, that that's sitting right here in, in, in Bloomington. People don't know that. So, yeah. so that type of stuff. But, but I think too, you know, uh, you start talking about Oliver winery and Butler winery and, and some of that, those little hidden gems out, out, outside the city limits. Oh um, yeah. Um, well, that's a great answer. I mean, the I know about the monastery, but I've never. Right. Uh, we catered a wedding that was out, like, but we've never gone. In, I've never gone and visited, really, you know, and taken my time, like, a deliberate trip there. So right. I'm glad you reminded me that I need to go go there and really see what it has to offer. You know, and this is and and this is one that you obviously know about, but Fourth Street, of course, the the International Row on Fourth Street uh, is uh, people do again when 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 I um, when we're promoting that to to travel media, and we we do a lot of that. I, last last year we generated. 122 mentions of Bloomington in earned media, whether that was something in from the New York Times to the writer here in Bloomington, but 122 mentions generated by my office. And uh, it's hard to even um, get a, a travel writer to understand 4th Street until they come here and see, wow, there's... 18 different con- countries yeah. represented right there with cuisine. And, and there's these amazing, really, families living in these houses that are restaurants just churning out this quality e- dining experiences yeah. and food that you can't find anywhere else in the world. And and so um, we need to do a better job of promoting that. And, and it's something we talk about all the time, but it's hard to to even put it in words unless we can get a writer here or somebody to experience it. So. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about, I had lunch a little Tibet yesterday. It was fantastic. I just like, I said of all the Tibetan mm-hmm. specialties, I was like, you pick, just add beef, please. And then we did the momos. And I didn't know that they, and Gary, you might've known about this, that there's a option to pan fry them for a dollar more. Did you know about that? Yeah. I've had this before. There's no, but this. no, but did you know that it was like an upcharge and you could pan fry them? You don't just order them. You had to order them pan fried. I've had a pan fried. Okay, yeah, I had no idea. I was I've been over here. Crispy, yeah. yeah, I've yeah. just been ordering regular Ooh. momos like a dum dum. Yeah. <laughs> no, I Nothing know. Wrong but like, with those. I didn't realize you could pan fry them. It only cost you a dollar. I've been doing crispy dumpling. Yeah, yeah I would have been doing that the whole time. Yeah. A little Tibet <laughs> taste, taste of India is hard it's hard to beat too. But I, I don't I don't even like to single out restaurants and say their names because right. there's so many. I just kind of go in phases. I've been on a real Allery kick lately. Nice. Okay. I love going to the Allery. Um, you know, I, I, nothing better to me than a nice cold quarryman pale ale from BBC, go. that type of stuff. So I can, I can really start naming my favorite dishes and, and, and places to go. But, but I, I try to frequent all kinds of places. And, 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 uh, so I, so I have some experience talking about it and things like that and no shortage of places I need to get to often. Yeah. So. We got to do that a taste of India lunch buffet before to get for a lunch meeting. And that was so good. And <laughs> right. I, I think I went back a week later on my own. Cause I was just like, man, I need to get here more. Uh, and then one of, yeah, one of the things you mentioned with the, uh, the Bloomington mentions and media is you, I mean, you go up and do wish TV, WTHR, you do promotions of Bloomington and India all the time. And then we 
you also, uh, you just like hosted a, a golf travel writer and he played the foul course and put out yeah. this really great content. Tell me some more about those yeah. things that you guys do. We've got a travel ride. We've got a couple travel riders. I've got, I've got two travel riders coming in April to cover the little 500. And um, one, one is from Cycling Weekly Magazine. One is from Adventure Cycling Magazine. They'll be here for the Little 500. Nice. And then um, I've, I've got two. One's, one's a mountain biker and one is a, a road biker. So I've got, a two, I've got a guide lined up for each one of those. One's going to take them on a mountain biking ride, and one of them's going to take them on a cycling ride. And then they'll be on the infield for the Little 500, so they're going to write stories about that. So that's what we do. We, we, we actually cover their expense. We work with them and get them to come. I've been after them for a decade to come and cover little 500 that's finally a doing it this year yeah, that's great and we cover their expense we fly them in cover their expenses we we you know again tour them around we want to we want them to write stories about cycling opportunities here and, and that type of stuff we've got um somebody coming from um national geographic traveler in april they're going to do a story on morel mushroom hunting oh and okay. so they're going to go over yeah. we're going to take them over to the uptown cafe because they'll be serving the morels yeah and, absolutely and um you know i think we're going to blind we're going to blindfold <laughs> the rider and they're going to get taken out to the secret spot you can't, yeah they can't know the Mar- they can't. Right, those types of things um we've got um uh uh, somebody from the Smithsonian is interested in doing a wow. story on Indiana limestone. And again, that's another hidden gem. Yeah. I, I had two friends in town this past weekend when um, the Hoosiers whooped Illinois' ass, yeah. which was great. <laughs> Thank you for that. I yeah. got bragging not, rights Not from so that. fighting Illini. Right. right. <laughs> but um, I had got two em. friends in town for that. And... Um, you know, I, I they had no idea about Indiana limestone. So you know, again, I was talking to them about Yankee Stadium and the Empire State Building, yeah. and, and you know, we we're on top of the richest limestone deposit in the world. And they're like, "What? What are you talking no about?" No way! So yeah. that type of stuff. So again, that's always a great story. I, I always like this. To you know, in 1895, the limes the limestone companies around here they were they were taking um, they they were. Tr- pe- taking people by train from New York City and the major major markets and and train and 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 transporting to Bloomington and Monroe County to wine and dine them to buy Indiana limestone. I'm like, wow, we still do the same thing. Yeah. We, we get these people to come here and wine and dine them, whether to have their event here or whatever it might be. So. It's pretty remarkable that's so about nuts. what this community's been doing for all these years. One hundred, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And you had mentioned on that note of just the history and how long we've been doing some of these things, whether it's ten thousand years or <laughs> you know the late eighteen hundreds. It's you mentioned going to the Monroe County History Museum or Center, and yes. I've never been there. And you, there were, tell me a little bit about that experience and what people can see there. Oh wow! Well, I mean, you can see the whole story of you know we 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 just celebrated our our two our bicentennial yeah. three or four years ago, and so the whole story of that. But I mean, you walk really you walk into um, the Monroe County History Center, and it it just unfolds for you right there. It just starts with the early settlers that came here and settled in, and and it takes you through everything from from Bill Cook when he when he started Cook to you know all the way to Hoosier Energy to to, uh, you know, there's 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 a John Mellencamp yeah. um, exhibition. Maybe the first color exhibit. television. Yeah, all, yeah, of course, yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Thanks for saying that. But yeah, everything. So it's it's just an it's just a great walk through time of of almost anything you can see here in in, in Bloomington and Monroe County. Um, very well done. The stuff always changes up. They just had an incredible um, Bloomington restaurant. Exhibit. That's what you, I think. Yeah. That's what we had talked about because I was trying to remember. I'm sitting here as it like, what was it? There was something about restaurants too. Yeah, they went back and and um and they, they don't have the exhibit up anymore, but they collected menus from from restaurants over the last hundred years or so. They're going to do a part two. That's great. But it was remarkable. They had all these old photos and the menus and stories and you know there's still many of those those owners that are still around and and can tell those stories. But I saw I actually saw a presentation of it from the from the person who runs the history center she gave a, a presentation about it at um i think it was at a rotary club thing oh and, cool and i was blown away by it and i'm like we need to that should be a permanent exhibit 100%. somewhere so i know they're going to do part two of it so i think that'd be really cool to me like if we do ever get the expansion done at the convention center we should permanently display that or or the history center could or somebody yeah. could, somewhere it could be a permanent display of music a permanent display of um sports you know those types of things we need to be doing more of that yeah, yeah. Uh, you think we have enough room in here garrett we could have a, <laughs> a history of food in bloomington i'm no? down okay all right sweet we got the okay 
We're going to have to move the futon. Well, I mean, the, the convention center will be right where we're sitting now. No, so. that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this will just be where it is in the convention this center. Facility is owned, <laughs> this facility is owned yeah. by the convention, you know, the, the group that owns that. Um, this is part of the, um, I mean, there's no plan to to, to take this building right, away. I've yeah. always said Artisan Alley should be part of the expansion. There are other communities that build facilities like this and attach them to their convention center because they would love to have that you know, that organic art component. Yeah, the makers. Yeah. yeah, the makers. You host an event and people love that. You host a you host a reception in here that you bring down those planners. It's it's remarkable. So we got we've just got such a great product here. We just don't have the space for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's We're funny. I was just making it, a joke and you're like, well actually. Yeah. <laughs> well yeah, so we'll install the exhibit here now and then it'll just it, when the convention center makes its way around, it'll just yeah. tie it all in right there. We'll just be like, Can it be presented <laughs> by no dishes? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's like got a life size statue like at the entrance like <laughs> we I don't think tunnel, we have, huh? tunnel underground to the to the artisan alley until we get up people take that oh yeah there we go over here through the through the limestone tunnel if we're building this. tunnels we might as well just put one over to the moose too while we're at it for sure I'm <laughs> may as well yeah <laughs> you've mentioned you know keeping up with the food uh stuff on the website is tough because there's always places closing opening what are some of um some of the ones that have are no longer open that you really enjoy that you really miss oh my gosh you're, you're killing me i'm gonna um it's so hard to even um, begin yeah um you tell me one yeah um, i mean well the one that always comes up i mean are there a couple you know you always no coast reserve is always one of the first no ones coast mentioned. Reserve, sure there's no one that ever the thing with no coast is that there's no one that really came in to fill that void as a seafood i mean where it's tough right. and i under it's really tough to get fresh product do the right amount of ordering you, you know you're gonna have waste at what point does it become cost prohibitive you know uh and then darn good soup also i got i'm just soup, moving down the line man. on the square <laughs> yes thanks for ringing the bell and and w the waffle house was that the waffle house oh yeah yes. i'm so glad you mentioned that yeah. the 10th and college yes, yes yes i always forget i want to say waffle house then i then i confuse it with the chain thing was it called the waffle house or something else but it was the waffle yeah, house yeah that's yes. one because that's yeah. another thing where there's not really like i mean there's ihop but like there's not a place like that downtown you know b-town diner used to be that and right. but they're not open 24 hours anymore but that's uh um, yeah, there's not that late night food spot where you can kind of just go hang out. Right, right. It's hard. I'm not. I, I I'm getting old. I have a bad memory, so I don't remember the rest. I I don't remember the restaurants that, that closed as much anymore. I always just think about the new ones. Right. Well, like you said, you're opening. You're an optimist, so you don't like to be <laughs> dragged down by being sad about That's what's right. no longer. Yeah, <laughs> I can really. Hey, I get that. That's good. What What are some new places that you've enjoyed? Yeah, you know, I, I know you love this, but I love the Orbit Room. Um, you know, I love going there for a hot dog and a beer. Yeah. And I'm a big music fan, and I think it's one of the best. It's a listening room, so it's a great place to go see a band and and have that food. So that so that's one of my favorite. Like I said, the Allery is a, is a great one. The Trojan Horse is, has always been a favorite. Um, I had breakfast at farm on Saturday and lunch at the up or breakfast at farm on Saturday and dinner at the uptown cafe what? on Saturday night. So that was a banner day of eating. That's because my friends were in town. So yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to give them that experience. That's so, a great one two um, punch. Right. Yeah. Do right. you get those, those biscuits at farm? Those I do. Four, oh, I man. do. Yeah. They're so yeah. perfect. I love everything about them. Yeah. They did. Uh, we're, we're recording this on fat Tuesday. Um, so I'm feeling extra fat today. Yeah. You <laughs> know where really I haven't. Excited. Yeah. And Lenny's has got their fat Tuesday specials going on. I'd love to get down there. I haven't been to small favors yet though. So oh, I'm feeling man. guilty yeah. about that. Well, and they're doing I, lunch now. So yeah, if we need that, I, buddy, we I was going to say, it. if we have a lunch meeting coming up, let's do it. Yeah. They, um, what else was that? There was, um, right before you said small favors, I was going to mention something. Oh, well, but yeah, small favors. Is a good job. Nailed it. Um, small favors is so good. And they did at the end of January, 50% off, you know, for at lunch, just to get people in there to try it. I did, uh, a ham plate. It was like city ham, cornbread, deviled eggs, uh, greens, just all on a plate for lunch. It was great. And, um, Nick Dietrich, the owner and, um, you know, who's has been on the the podcast and opened so many great restaurants in New Orleans and London. He brought out their this house made bacon they did, and it was by far 
the best bacon I've ever had. It was phenomenal. Nice. And my first question is like, have you tried this on a burger yet? Because it just had, it was just thick and smoky and crispy. It had like juniper and all, I don't know. I don't know what all he had on it, but yeah. it was amazing. That's great. You know, I think too, I, I uh, um, you know, some of the newer places that I love are the, are the, you know, the bakeries and the coffee houses, two sticks. I love two oh, sticks yeah. and, and uh, crumble and, and, you know, some of the other coffee houses that yeah. open up. Verona's the need newer, more. newest I love one. need oh. more over on the East side. Katie does a fantastic Doesn't job over the, there. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's waiting for that apartment complex to be done oh, right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> All that construction can be done. And, you know, she's done a great job of keeping it going and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Before, but, yeah. Before she had that brick and mortar, she would set up a tent at Food Truck Friday when we yeah. were at the stand. Yeah. And I, that was so cool having her there. And her knowledge of coffee was uh, endless. Yeah, She really knew knew her stuff and was passionate about it. It was such a great product. I think they're doing I, – I, I can't speak for her, but I, I drive by there every day. It's on my way to work. And so I see – car. you know, I think I – think you know, there's a lot more people coming in there. And I know, I know she's anxious for that apartment complex to get done because there's all that construction right in front oh, of the street. Oh, that's never but fun. Once it's done, it'll, it'll be, uh, that'll go really well for her over there. I remember the thing I was going to mention was I, I had the Lenny's Mardi Gras specials yesterday. Oh, okay. I did the muffaletta, which was fantastic. Although I'm a big, I know how they're not supposed to, and usually it's not like the meat's not fluffed, but I'm a big, like on the sandwich, you need want to pull it. And like, you don't want it dense. Yeah. And so I like pulled it apart and kind of just layered it. You want the little air pockets in there, or at least I do. And then uh, the crawfish dip was so stinking good. It was, And they give you just good old club crackers in a brown bag. Uh, and they had a really, really good cra uh, crawfish dip. And then they were doing banana Foster's dessert um, with the best ice cream you could ever find. That's great. That's great. Again, I, I, uh, you know, Jeff Meese is kind of my go-to. You, you and him now are my go-to when I want some knowledge and wisdom about the culinary scene here in Bloomington. You know, I think you know his vision was a big part of it way back when, and you know all he did to, with the the legislation to get the the the, the you know, the small breweries going and things oh, like yeah. that. Pretty remarkable and, and everything. So. Yeah, I'm sure any wisdom was from him. But, and I'll, <laughs> I'll help with knowledge. But yeah, I'm sure any wisdom was from Jeff and not me. But he's he's done so much. He was one where when we first started this podcast, the first one we ever or the second one we ever recorded, first one we ever released was with him. Great. Um, other than one that was like myself, myself, Wes and Abel. And right. it was just a no brainer to be like, I reached out like Jeff, I'm starting a podcast. And I was like, man, if I can get Jeff to come on, like the, I think this thing might have some steam you know right and that was we actually went to his office so it was one of the few we didn't record in my apartment um and it was september of 2020 august of 2020 right so we were he fortunately they had a long conference room and he sat way down there and i sat way down here and then we were still catching flack from people for having masks off despite being Right. forever way but it was so cool his story and just picking his brain and he's so passionate about the community and doing things the right way and i love hive one world catering the woolery mill bbc obviously he sold to the franklins who are doing an amazing job and yes. really running with it yeah. um it, but it's it's great all the things that they're they dabble yeah. in yeah and you know we're you he's just one of many and you, you know michael cassidy and and rags and, and oh yeah uh, you know and and uh, the Olivers and, and Jim Butler out of Butler Winery. Yeah. I mean, Jim Butler, he, he is the reason that the Upland Viticultural District exists. You know, really? we, okay. we, you know, he, he wrote that legislation and that bill that made this whole area from, from here in the Uplands all the way down into Kentucky and Tennessee, a viticultural winery area where people flock to from, once you get that designation, you, it just goes on the map and people come to it. So wow. isn't yeah. Indiana like the sixth largest producer of wine in, in the country? Well, it was something one of them I, like that. You know, yeah, Oliver was, Winery is the largest um, east of the Mississippi, you know. That's what it was. There was, yeah. Right. Um, just, just incredible. And again, another, you know, that's another uh, you know, thing that people don't understand you know you tell them that they're like ah oh, what are you talking about it's like yes you know it's it's the, the the best wine you can get you know east of the mississippi type of stuff so yeah it's yeah. and then butler i was actually i drove by butler on sunday and this kind of goes back to the limestone to thing i've been doing i just when it's nice out especially when it's been cold so much i love going and shifting through the turns and right. um a few days back i was it took victor pike where it goes into the 37 just south of where it in 69 split sure and i was about to take a right and i was like i'm gonna go straight straight here and just see where this goes. I had never gone straight there. And I just wandered on back there and went south 
Southwest and drove by all these quarries that I had never seen. And um, next thing you know, I'm coming in on Rockport, which I didn't even know Rockport went out that far. And then Sunday, I was going out to the new renovated Port Hole Inn. And I'm about to write a review on that. I've got some sweet. Oh man, it was <laughs> so good. They uh, they did it right. They've got a really good ownership group. The four guys involved. I've known all of them to varying degrees for a bit, and they're all very passionate, good guys that know what they're doing. And they just they kind of got that place, and they're they're doing it right, man. They renovated it. They've got a pizza oven in there. My buddy did a, a buffalo pineapple pizza that was phenomenal. Um, it was so good. It was. Yeah. And then I did a French dip and it was just a really good au jus and they had hush puppies and they had these blue cheese chips appetizers. And, you know, if you're going to do an appetizer like that, it's, you got to, it's three ingredients. So you got to nail them. And the, the fresh homemade cut potato chips were hot, piping hot. The blue cheese was stanky and good. And then you had the green onions and it was just such a good, simple. I love when something's so delicious and so simple. Right. You don't have to right. go super complicated with it. Hey, Lake Lemon, you know, another another hidden gem that that um, just remarkable that it's here and, and the porthole being out there. I mean, hey, go out there for for blues night and and have a good dinner and date night for blues night and have a couple beers. It's it's a great 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 venue out there yeah driving by it was a beautiful day on sunday yeah. too and so yeah we went out the scenic route by butler we went out there and just lake lemon i've never gone out on it i've gone to riddle point yeah. but it's uh, i need a if you have a house on lake lemon i'd love to come out <laughs> i need to get out on that lake it's uh, it seems like such a cool spot yeah well, it Mike, th I feel like there's uh, so much more I want to dive into with you, but we're out of time. But thanks thanks again for everything you do for Visit Bloomington, for everything Visit Bloomington does for us. And I'm, I'm glad that we can just all appreciate the community that we have here. Yeah, it's great, Jordan. I, um, you know, it's great to, to be working with you, and and um, it makes such good sense for us to be supporting this show. Let's let's grow it together. The 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 you know when you do better, we all do better. And so if we can grow your listenership, it's only going to help the 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 culinary scene in Bloomington, and and just again help us responsibly grow it. I love it. Well, I'll uh, I'll see you at Small Favors for lunch then. Yeah, we'll make that happen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, Mike. guys. Thanks for joining us in the latest episode of the No Dishes Podcast. Do you like what you heard? Be sure to write a review, rate us, subscribe, like, whatever it is that you do uh, to show your support. We really appreciate it. Until next time, be sure to keep those hands dry. <laughs>4 of the No Dishes podcast is brought to you by visitbloomington.com. Visitbloomington.com is the best resource for restaurants and culinary information, special events, fun activities, places to stay, and more in our area. We share a similar mission here on the No Dishes podcast of highlighting local businesses and the people who make our community unique. We can't thank them enough for hopping on board. Check them out at visitbloomington.com to easily plan your next meal, visit, or night out on the town. No, no dishes, dishes media. No dishes, dishes media. media. <laughs>